Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about exponents with a negative base. So let's jump right into this topic and discuss some key details. And the first thing we're going to talk about is that the base of a number written in exponent form does not include the negative sign unless we use parentheses. So if you have something like negative 5, and I want to put an exponent on this number, I have to use parentheses to make negative 5 my base. So let's say I want negative 5 squared. Okay, I have to use parentheses around negative 5. Otherwise, if I have negative 5 squared like this, my base is now 5. It's not negative 5. And later on in the lesson, I'm going to explain exactly why that happens. But for now, let's just get this point clear. The base of a number written in exponent form does not include, and I'm just going to highlight that, does not include the negative sign unless we use parentheses. Okay? Unless we use parentheses. All right, so here are a few rules to remember. Number one, when you perform exponent operations and the base is positive, the result is always positive, right? So that's simple enough, okay? If you have a positive base, no matter what your exponent is, the result is always going to be positive. All right, rule number two, when we perform exponent operations with a negative base that is enclosed inside of a set of parentheses, the result will be, and then we have an either-or situation, well, the result is going to be positive if the exponent is even. Okay, so positive if the exponent is even, and then negative if the exponent is odd. Okay? Okay, let's look at an example real quick. Okay, for example number one, the objective here is to evaluate each. And remember, evaluate just means to find a value for. So for part one, we have negative six squared. Now notice how we have parentheses around the base. So the base here is negative six. Okay, so to square negative six, all you do, again, is just multiply negative six by itself. And so we have two factors of negative six. Okay, so we know how to multiply negative numbers. Negative six times negative six is just 36. Let's go down here and look at part two now. And here we have negative six cubed, right? Negative six cubed. So now we can see that the exponent is odd. So we know we're going to have a negative answer. But let's just go through this. We'll have negative six times negative six times negative six, right? You have three factors of negative six. And so I know the answer is negative here, right? I have negative times negative times negative. Three negatives, I know I'm going to have a negative result. And so what I want to do now is just 6 times 6, which is 36, times 6 again, which is 216. Okay, so the answer here would be negative 216. Okay, for example number 2, the objective is to evaluate each. Okay, and then for part 1 here, we have negative 9 squared. Okay, and again, we have parentheses around the base here. I just noticed that. Because later on, we're going to do some problems where there aren't parentheses around the base, and it's going to change our answer. So again, we have an even exponent, so I know my answer is going to be positive. Right? This is just going to be negative 9 times negative 9, and so negative 9 times negative 9 is just 81. Okay, so that's simple enough. All right, for part 2, we have negative 4 to the 5th power. And again, we have parentheses around the base here. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to have five factors of negative four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Right? Okay, so I know this is going to be negative, right? Because five is an odd number. So I can just go ahead and just slap a negative sign out here for my answer. And then I can do four times four, that's 16. Then 16 times 4, that's 64. Then 64 times 4, we could do 
four times six is 24 plus one is 25. So that'd be 256. And then we multiply by four one more time. Four times six is 24. Four times five is 20 plus two is 22. Four times two is eight plus two is 10. All right, so your answer here would be negative 1,024. And negative 1,024. Okay, for example, number three, the objective again is to evaluate each. And then for part one here, we have negative seven squared. So again, parentheses around the base here. So I want negative seven times negative seven. Negative seven is negative is positive, right? Remember, this is a two, so it's even. So I know my answer is positive. All right, so negative seven times negative seven, that's just positive four to nine. Okay, for part two here, we have negative 10 to the seventh power. So again, notice the parentheses around the base here. And so now I can look at this and say, well, I have seven factors of negative 10. Seven is an odd number, so I know the answer is going to be negative. Now I'm not going to go through and multiply out seven factors of negative 10 because there's a quicker way to do it when you have 10 as your base. I can ignore the negative sign here because I know that the answer is negative. So if I had 10 to the seventh power, I would just put a one here and then I'd put seven zeros after it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. So one, two comes, right? So you would end up with 10 million, right? So I'm just gonna bring this up here and attach the negative to it. And we end up with negative 10 million as our answer. Okay, so now that we understand the basic concept, let's discuss the more difficult scenario to understand. And this is basically when we perform exponent operations with a negative base that is not enclosed in the set of parentheses, the result is always negative, okay? So it doesn't matter if your exponent is odd or even, the result's always gonna be negative. Okay, let's work through this example and I'm gonna try to explain to you why that's the case. Okay, so for example four, the objective here is to evaluate each. Okay, so for part one we have negative two squared. But notice we don't have any parentheses around negative two. So what this is actually telling me is I want the opposite of two squared. Well, why is that the case? Why is this telling me I want the opposite of two squared? Well, if you think about how negative two can be perceived, you could really write negative two as negative one times two, right? Those two are equal. Negative two is equal to negative one times two. So because I can do that, if you think about negative two squared like this, I could really write this as negative one times two squared. Negative one times two squared. So if I think about my order of operations, I have multiplication here and I have an exponent here. What's the higher priority? Well, I wanna do the exponent first. So if I do the exponent first, I have two squared, that's four. And so what I would end up with is negative one times four. And of course this equals negative four. Okay, negative four. So the answer here is going to be negative four, right? Because really, if you were gonna write this out, you would set this up as the opposite of two times two. Okay, the opposite of two times two. Two times two is four, the opposite of that's negative four. Okay, so again, this just really deals with the order of operations. And so you wanna pay, pay close attention to whether or not your base has parentheses around it when it's negative, right? Let's look at another example here. Okay, here we have negative five cubed. And again, there's no parentheses around the base, so I know the result's negative. But in this scenario, because this is an odd number, even if we had negative five inside of a set of parentheses, the result would still be negative, right? Negative five cubed 
is negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. And this, of course, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. And that's the same thing you're going to get here. Right? I mean, if you think about this, negative 5 cubed, no parentheses around the base. So really, we say the opposite of 5 cubed. You would do 5 cubed first. 5 cubed is 125. And then you just take the opposite of that. So it would become negative. Right? So you end up with negative 125. So the only time that this is really going to make a difference is when you have a negative base and your exponent's even. Okay, that's when it's really going to make a difference. Let's look at another problem. Okay, for example, number five, again, the objective is to evaluate each. And so for part one, we have negative 10 to the fourth power. Again, no parentheses around the base. So I know how to do 10 to the fourth power. That's really easy. I'll just write this as the opposite of. Right, what's 10 to the fourth? You put a one down, follow that with four zeros. One, two, three, four. So that's 10,000. And then I want the opposite of that, so you end up with negative 10,000. Okay, so it's that simple. Now, remember, if I had parentheses around negative 10, and this was raised to the fourth power, then this would be positive 10,000. Okay, why is that the case? Let's think about what this is really saying. If I have negative 10 inside of a set of parentheses raised to the fourth power, well, then what I really want is negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. And so, of course, when I multiply all these together, I have four negatives. That's an even number of negatives. So my answer is positive. Right? So I would end up with positive 10,000. Now, another way you could break this down, if I said negative 10 is negative 1 times 10, just like we did earlier when we were talking about negative 2 is equal to negative 1 times 2. But notice how this is in parentheses. So if I go to, to do this, what I really have to do is have negative 1 inside of parentheses raised to the fourth power times 10 inside of parentheses raised to the fourth power. So negative 1 raised to the 4th power with parentheses around the base is just 1. And 10 raised to the 4th power is 10,000. And so again, you end up with 10,000. Okay. And here, for part 2, we have negative 12 squared. But again, there's no parentheses around the base, so we can just read this as the opposite of 12 squared. All right, so what's 12 squared? Well, 12 squared is 12 times 12. That's 144. And then we would just say, I want the opposite of that. So your answer here would be negative 144.